Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann and today I want to talk about um, the novel Maurice by E.M. Forster. I always want to add a syllable and make it Forrester, but it's Forster, um, which I started reading in March for March of the Moderns, um, but I just finished it uh, yesterday, which was April 6th. I'm filming on April 7th. Um, I read it on my Kindle, so I will splash up a, um, a picture of the cover for that. So I am, um, I, I want to gush about it. I loved it. Um, but I think I do need to label that this is going to be spoilers um, because uh, this book to me is, um, is very much a romance. And so I feel like you kind of go in knowing how a romance ends. Um, and all of the, uh, blurbs online are just like, this ends in a certain way. So, um, so if you, but if you really don't want to know anything about it, then please stop watching in like a couple seconds. All I'll say in sort of a non-spoiler, spoilerly, spoilery way um, is that I loved this book. It's a very sort of affirming um, story about uh, being queer in the early 20th century in England. Um, yeah, I thought it was sort of a very powerful uh, queer joy claiming and affirming identity book um, sort of in those respects and that was what really spoke to me and that I really loved about it. Um, and uh, some sort of content warnings because even though um, it's a lot about sort of uh, owning queer identity at that time, um, the novel is very upfront about the difficulties of being queer at that time in England when homosexuality was illegal and could be a criminal act. Um, and, uh, and so the main character does experience um, uh, depression, depressive episodes, and um, and suicidal thoughts at various points in the novel. So just throwing that out there if that's something you don't want to read. Um, but I love this book. Okay, so if you don't want to hear any more, stop watching now. If you do want to hear more, I would love to tell you about it. So um, as I mentioned, this book is uh, sort of set and was written in early 20th century England. It was written over the period like 1913, 1914, and the action of the novel is set in around 1912, so it's pre-World War I, but sort of the end of an era in England. Um, but the novel wasn't published until 1971 after Forster's death. Um, and that's because, as I mentioned, it really reads like a romance. So it has a happy ending for a gay couple, which like would have been unheard of in, um, in 1914 if it had been published at that time. It probably wouldn't have been published. I mean, who would have picked it up? Uh, what publisher would have picked it up. Um, and Forster, uh, one of the cool things is that even though this wasn't published until after Forster's death, um, he does have an end note that he wrote in 1960. So he sort of did a last revision of the novel in 1959 to 1960 and then wrote a note about it. And in the note, he does say, maybe this could have been published, you know, during my lifetime if it had had a sad ending. Um, but I was determined that this was going to be a happy novel, essentially, because that's not represented in literature. Um, and even being published in 1971, it did have a lot of negative reviews and very mixed critical reception. And I love this book so much that when I looked it up on Wikipedia after I finished it, I was like, are you kidding me? Who would give a bad review of this book? But 1971, I mean, even today is still, um, still not as open-minded and accepting as I would like our culture. Um, so one quote from um, a critic that uh, that I sort of thought was funny was in 1970, funny, not in like a ha ha way, but just a like, are you kidding me way? But um, a critic said, uh, quote, I can detect nothing particularly homosexual about Maurice other than it happens to be about homosexuals, which is like, that's sort of the point. Love is love. There's not anything weird or different about the love between two men compared to the love between a man and a woman. There's just stupid sociocultural limitations um, on sort of the public nature of what that love can look like. But like, we're still just talking about human beings. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think that sort of maybe to me put into context the, the more negative and mixed reception that this book got in 1971. Um, but uh Anyway, 
yeah, so let's talk about the actual book. So, um, so the book, as I've said, is sort of a romance. It's also a little bit of sort of coming of age. And as I mentioned um, early in my video, sort of coming into and owning and claiming a queer identity. So we, we do hear a little bit about the main character Maurice's um, childhood and adolescence and then um, his period at university. And then the bulk of the novel sort of takes place just after university. I think he's maybe 24 when the novel ends. Um, and... So we get a lot of just uh, sort of universal what it's like, I think, for really anybody um, to sort of have a romantic and eventually sexual awakening. Um, so I really identified quite a bit with some of the things that Maurice was going through, some of the things he was wondering about. Um, struggling with, you know, was there anyone he could talk to about the feelings and things that he was going through? And of course, there's the uh, specific angle that he was sort of very slowly coming to terms with being gay in a society where that was totally unacceptable. Um, and so at that point, you know, it sort of left the realm of my experience. But but I did feel like I identified strongly with a lot of what Maurice was going through. Um, and then the book also engages with two other main characters um, named Clive and Alec, who comes in towards the end of the book. Um, and Forster is pretty upfront in the note at the end of his novel where, where all three of the characters are sort of archetypes of England at that time. So the main character, Maurice, is just kind of a blah guy. He's sort of the like suburban businessman. Um, so he's, you know, he's smart enough to go to Cambridge to university. Uh, but, you know, nothing like outstanding um, about the way he thinks or, or his character. Uh, you know, he's into sports. Um, he does just fine as a businessman. But, you know, he's just sort of like a blah suburban stereotype. And then Clive is the um, sort of uh, like Cambridge extreme intellectual stereotype. So he's kind of portrayed as like a little anemic almost. And Clive is Maurice's first love. And what we learn through the course of the novel is that, um, you know, as Maurice is coming into his identity as a gay man, he has this romantic relationship with Clive, who is exploring homosexuality as sort of an intellectual exercise, it turns out. <coughs> Excuse me. So he is, um, he's sort of going through a, like, intellectual rebellion phase in university and is, um, sort of falls in love with uh, like a Greek idea of like platonic love between men he's referring to all the time. And so the relationship that he and Maurice have is romantic and loving and affectionate, but it's physically chaste um, because Clive, as it turns out, is not actually um, gay. He might, you know, it's hard to tell from the novel. He might, he might be somewhere on sort of a queer spectrum, but he, he never, at least in the, in the, um, frame of the novel, he never truly sort of embraces any of that identity. So he and Maurice have a very close loving relationship, um, but it really ends up being sort of an unrequited love for Maurice, who is sort of just like fully there, like totally ready to commit love of his life sort of thing. Um, and that's really just not what it is for Clive. And so after, um, after the university experience, Clive sort of dumps Maurice and ends up marrying a woman. Um, and then for a large period of the novel, Maurice is just really struggling with, um, sort of overwhelming loneliness and despair about what his life might look like because he has realized that he is gay, um, and that he could never be interested in women, um, and really struggles with the... Uh, the sadness imposed by a society that cre that can't create any space for him to live a fulfilled life. Um, and so that part of the novel was very stressful and hard to read. <laughs> um, and uh, and there there are some instances where he per he um, he talks with some doctors about if there's any way to like cure this, which is heartbreaking. Um, but it ends great. So. Um, uh, Maurice uh, sort of eventually, you know, hits some some breaking points, and then um, pretty fortuitously, uh, he's he's sort of visiting his old friend Clive. Um, oh, and I, should, and I should have mentioned. Well, I'll mention this at the end anyway. Okay, he's visiting his old friend Clive at Clive's uh, sort of uh, family estate, um, and uh, you know, sort of going through these these trials and tribulations, um, feeling the weight of this loneliness and. 
Uh, he has a couple instances where he's sort of just in like an excess of emotion is just like calling out into the night, um, you know, sort of without really meaning to just like, ah, like I need companionship. Um, and a young gameskeeper uh, who works for his friend Clive, um, who had already started making some appearances in the book, actually uh, hears this plea and comes to Maurice. Um, and so that's the character Alec, who's introduced, um, who is of a different social class than Maurice. Um, and so that's another interesting angle of the book that I'll mention in a second. Um, and Alec turns out to be the love of Maurice's life. Um, and so there is a little bit of drama, sort of a they get together, but then it's like a will they, won't they, um, you know, Alec is sort of ready to commit first and Maurice sort of backs away a little. Um, but then they do come together and it's just like, it is a classic romance. The, there's the brief will they, won't they, and you totally understand why each of them is hesitant. Um, and then they each do a grand gesture and come together. And it's just like, there, it was just so joyous. I just absolutely loved it. And um, and part of that, uh, um, Maurice goes back to Clive and says, you know, basically, for the record, this is the last conversation I'm ever going to have with you. I am gay, and I love it, and I love your gameskeeper, and we're going to go be happy together and basically fuck off with like society and culture and religion all of that that says this is wrong this isn't wrong um so oh, it's amazing um so I love that um so back to the point about class so um so another sort of interesting point is we do have this very deliberate decision by Forster to have the main character really reject sort of all of the trappings of England at that time so he rejects class. Um, he is totally willing to um, quit his job. We're not, we're not sure that he does at the end or not, but basically do whatever it takes to um, essentially go into exile and, and live a fulfilled life without all this BS that tells him that the way he wants to live his life is wrong. Um, so there's a complete rejection of sort of all of those structures in a very positive way. Um, and then this guy Clive um, is, I mentioned, sort of the Cambridge intellectual, but he's also coming from a landed family. Um, and we get some pretty overt uh, sort of imagery critiquing that through the book. So every time we see his family's estate, it's portrayed as, you know, run down. It's like outlasted its usefulness. Um, you know, the gates are broken, the roof leaks. And Forster is pretty explicit. At one point, Maurice, towards the very end of the novel, he's really just about to totally come into his own and like you know, talk back to Clive and um, he's approaching and he's like, this darn gate is still broken. And like, these are the people that we let run the world. That's dumb. <laughs> and then like a few pages later, he just like totally rejects Clive and everything Clive stands for and claims his life the way he wants it to be. And so there's a pretty explicit um, sort of critique there of the, uh, the class structure of England at that time. Um, that I appreciated. Um, so I think those are all the main points I wanted to cover. Um, that, uh, that sort of issue, like what I was sort of just talking about, the rejection of the class structure, is what, um, it's one of the things that makes this book a little bit more literary, I think, but it definitely isn't quite like a full-on literary novel. I mean, it's so heavy on the romance that it really, like, that's what it read to me as, was a romance rather than literary fiction. And I think that was that was also part of what some of the mixed reviews were about in 1971 when the book came out was like, we expected better of Forster, um, in a in a way. And it's like, ugh, go away. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I really love this book. It, as I mentioned, was a bit stressful to read sometimes. Um, but overall made me so happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would love to hear from anyone else who's read it. What did you think? Um, and I hope, uh, I hope some more people pick it up, um, based on me gushing about it. That would make me very happy. Um, so I will end there, but thanks for watching if you stuck through this long and uh, I'll hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.